Hunter x Hunter episode 59. Is it finally, finally time for the auction? Looks like old Irwin. Those eyebrows. Never too old to game. <laughs> Me bidding on the last copy of Final Fantasy VII when I'm 90. He must be destroyed. <laughs> he must demolish this old man. Oh! Yeah, that's right. New arc, new intro. Is that Jing Freeze? How will Leorio get thrown under the bus in this intro? <laughs> I'm gonna... Love interest for Gon or Kalua or both? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Competing love interest would be an interesting thing to explore for Gon and Kalua's friendship. And Pokemon cards. I hope I love all of you new people, new faces, half as much as I love the Phantom Troop. But that's a big ask. Ah yes, heartwarming friendship and love interest again. Watching them with love. <laughs> yeah, they're still here. They're still around. Ahsoka ever present. And yeah, there's still a lot to go to explore their powers and like dodgeball a la Spy X Family. Was that whole, whole Spy Family thing a Hunter x Hunter tribute? It's like the same, but with a young girl watching. And Ahsoka also watching. From very close distance. That was totally, totally new intro. Bid X and X Haste. I, I want to see Kurapika. Like, I want to see whether or not he has a hangover. Like, an emotional hangover. It was so, so much that he went through. <laughs> That was a lie. Don't need to read heartbeats to know that. Yeah, I hope we get more neon too. Yeah, it was tragic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neon, I mean, again, I love that Corolla scene because it showed there's more to her than meets the eye. She's pampered, spoiled. It doesn't mean she's cold-hearted. I thought it was a great touch that her stated motivation for learning using Nen is like helping people through fortunes. About Kuripika, I think the previous arc resolved itself on a favorable note for him, choosing friendship over, you know, just wrath, rage. But there's still some lingering questions. How does that affect the outlook going forward? How does Kuripika reconcile the fact that he went that deep into things that he probably felt on some level were not great? <laughs> Are we still in the mafia? Are we still a mafia? boss. There's something about this where, while well, it's been unnerving on top of being exciting to see Kurapika kind of go down this road, I'm not sure like just leaving it all behind is the answer either. Retreating into like a hole seems less satisfying than like seeing it through and overcoming it. <laughs> they were fine immediately. This was a really caring side of Leorio as well. The doctor in him. Alrighty, huh? That's got some, like, Nen shield. I wouldn't worry about it. It's not really impressive, considering everything we've seen already. It really is Jumanji. You're just in it. He's gonna be the old crazy man still inside. That's some real noble, high-level dedication. Of course it does. Of course. Because it's Hunter Hunter. Gon and Clue heard blah 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 blah. <laughs> the game. You can play the game. And you know he has money. I remember my first auction. <laughs> Okay, you, you're in. You're bidding. The first one is the hardest. I forget how much how much is in our bank account right now. <laughs> Definitely more than more than Kalua. Yeah, what exactly do you want? What's your goal here? Can we have it? <laughs> Show me your your laminated piece of cardboard that could be stolen at any time. Yet you carry on you. Oh yeah, <laughs> and Kalua doesn't have one. Fair and reasonable. Maybe we don't have to demolish him after all. Right. You don't. Yeah. You don't need to do it yourself. 
プレーニングが限られているからね。Kill them and you're in。マルチタップを使い、一つのハードで八人がプレイヤーの上限だ。そういえば。メモリーカードの三十ブロック。So、the games aren't linked through some network. どうやら審査対象としての資格はあるようだね。念は使えるんだろちょっと、レンを見せてもらおうか。はい<笑> !You couldn't have said anything they want to hear more. ダメですね。プレイさせるだけ無駄です。逃げ回ったあげく死ぬのがオチですね。Yeah, that is reasonable. They're... やっても見ないで。If you're evaluating based on Nen, they're new. I'm not 100% sure where Nen is going, but I know it's going a lot higher than this. I know the sky is kind of the limit here. Thinking about Nen again as having parallels with life, it's like, what's the limit on being your best self? But at the same time, to what I'm sure will be going in close objections. It's really tough to evaluate people based on one criteria alone. I mean, you sort of have to. How do you measure the unmeasurable? How do you assess the intangibles? But the intangibles are really where it's at a lot of the time. Like, I've noticed both in working and in hiring workers that, like, the paper stats are often correlated with ability, but there's like this X factor that people have that is the most important thing that's Not really easy to assess at a glance. And it's just like, for lack of a better word, general practical competence along with either drive or interest or some kind of higher thing pushing them along to pay the maximum attention to whatever they're doing. Some people just have something, they have something special that makes them able to do anything. And I think another important trait is not how good you are at something, but your rate of growth. How fast you learn. Like, if I throw you into something that you're not equipped for, how quickly will you become equipped for it and how quickly will you become advanced at it? It's also going to include together, which is a multiplier on their individual abilities. You can't leave without clearing it. Yeah, it's really all or nothing. So just live in the game. Wow. Making the copies worthless. He's basically on, on Ren, but. Alright, that's fair. Another test. Test X, test X, test. This also is a test. I mean, if you can't take this rejection, how can you be expected to clear Greed Island? <laughs> We have another exam arc. It'd be hilarious if we all end up at Greed Island together. And death. I just took it. Okay. All right, Conan. I was asking what's the difference between the Phantom Troop and Conan Glua. That gap is starting to become clear. Still not exactly clear on how this works. I hope they're all in the same world, same game. Yeah, Phantom Troop is a part of it. They're just characters now. When I first saw this guy, I never expected him to be the, the brains or heart of this operation. Well, here we are. Are we training? I mean, he's right to be selective. You can't really hold it against him. Just blew past us in some ways. But that's also because he had a much more specific goal. Going and Clue are still sort of doing the, the survey course. Yeah, I think that's wise. This is an endless question. It's come up a lot. You know, the, the question of like specialization versus broad focus. Specialization is where you end up shooting to great heights, being at the top of something, being really esteemed in a field, etc. And I think we notice the specialization the most because it ends up creating people and things that are just absolutely outstanding. But I don't think specialization is necessarily、uh, better intrinsically than exploration, keeping options open. One thing that sort of feels terrible intuitively to me is specializing for a long time in the wrong thing. I think the way to play it, if you don't know, Is to play a wide field, but in a very deliberate, strategic way. So, like, you choose things that have a lot of optionality and a lot of upside. An example of that would be like working on social skills. There's just so many, so many possible extensions of that, opportunities that come out of it, and often is essential for things you might want to specialize in later anyway. Language is a big one. You know, it's not just about the language itself, but about all the opportunities in the world that that language opens up for you. I would argue media creation. If you can take good photos and videos, there's a lot of things you can do with that. And I think at a certain point, if you have enough of those things at a decent enough level, They start to converge, and the convergence of multiple things, even at just a slightly above average. 
average level gives you a unique package above other people that is a specialization in a sense. There's never been anything I wanted to be an absolute master or specialist in. I've always been a jack of all trades. And I think over time, especially with the Haiku series, oddly, I've sort of come to peace with that being the way it is and seeing the unique strategic advantages of that. I mean, actually, while it is insanely difficult to reach like the top 1%, it's not really that hard. It's substantially easier to just get in the top like 20%, let's say. The 20% to 1% is where the masters and geniuses and famous people are made, but the marginal utility or difficulty of that last 19% could also be put into the effort of getting to the top 80% of like a dozen things and a bunch of things that are above average in conjunction end up becoming special, valuable, unique in themselves. So this thought process is an interesting one. Thinking, huh? Gon could just get really, really strong. Well, I felt really good when I kicked the Phantom Troop member in the face. That fits. Stubbornness. The ability to knock everyone and everything over. <laughs> Not my thinking ability, or maybe my thinking ability. Privately? Oh, it's kind of a competition. I don't know if thinking is the right answer for Gon. You gotta like throw him into a situation that makes him use stuff. Electricity. He already has that aptitude. We saw that when he resisted the chains or whatever. The whips. Oh, he's like the Star Wars Emperor. <laughs> Evil. Cool. Oh, hi. Yeah, they even animated in the, the eyes, dark eyes. I think we're all wondering what, where Krupi goes from here. Yeah, this is what specialization looks like, I think. How tedious. <laughs> it's not, not for everyone. Master might be a bit of a stretch, but definitely input. Definitely help, right? Oh, Damn, what a pro. Oh, okay, that answers that question. I guess we're still we're still working. We just still have this job. Uh, I think you I don't know. What do you think? Do you tell Kurpika or not? I think you do. Hey! Where's my boy Zushi? Hey, there he is! Still training. <laughs> I want it now. Now, 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 now. Don't skip steps. Interesting. Oh, he has really grown on me. <laughs> he threw me off at first with all the lurking, but... Oh no. <laughs> you just slap him through the phone. Why don't you kick something, see how it feels. Show him your iron will while you're at it. Hey, that was a very useful hint, huh? Oh no, we're doing so well. There you go, punch. He's punching stuff. Or was that his ears exploding again? Little friendly rivalry. This is something I think about a lot, and I think it's kind of tragic. Like, I haven't found a way to make this work or make this make sense, but it's really tough to be an observer of yourself and admire yourself in the way that you can be an observer and admirer of other people. There's some very strange but powerful magic in watching people go through things. An example I've always thought of is in movies, you watch someone kind of suffer or be angsty or whatever, and you think, oh, that's that's romantic. They're so cool, right? Then when it's you and you're suffering, you're just suffering, and it's, it's not cool at all. It's terrible. Or on the other side of that, 
you see people do really cool things or you see admirable traits and you think, man, I wish I was like that. But then like you do things that are admirable. You have admirable traits, surely, <laughs> hopefully. But I don't know, like I don't admire myself or take that kind of utility or, or pleasure in being myself as much as I see it in other people. Like I've wondered for a long time how to turn that lens inward, you know, how to like be that observer of yourself so that like what you're doing is great. What you're doing just tends to feel like what you're doing. It's this base state. And you can have moments, right? Like, you know, moments of real glory and pride, but it so quickly becomes your baseline. You can look at it objectively and think, oh yeah, I'm actually pretty great in like measurable terms, at least as far as I understand society and its value structure and its its ranking system. But it doesn't have the same emotional resonance as it does when you like witness something great from someone else. Maybe part of it is that with ourselves, we see the whole picture and we also see the struggle and the, the challenges and the ways we're yet incomplete. Whereas often when we're looking at other people, we're kind of looking at a, at a thin slice of their whole composition. It probably has something to do with the fact that just evolutionarily speaking, we don't need to worry as much about the things that are already kind of locked in. A lot of times the things we notice in other people that we like are things that we desire partly because we recognize we haven't yet locked that down for ourselves. I still have to say in the whole men is life thing, this is a very, very direct one-to-one. -one. And I think it's clear to the viewer that Gon has so much power and like can't, won't, shouldn't be Kurapika, but also why Gon might have the impulse to mirror Kurapika. Wing also giving really great advice about reflect on the things you've already done, essentially who you already are, because those are the things that are obviously the most resonant. While you can grit your teeth and discipline yourself, muscle yourself through growing in areas you're not naturally proficient or adept at, the multiplier effect happens in the areas you're already the most adept at, have the deepest interest in, feel the most connected to, etc. Gon struggling with it <laughs> also feels right. I love how Gon is just mastering this by himself in the other room, enjoying how much farther ahead of Gon he's, he's growing. Gon learns by doing. Yeah, it's kind of what I was saying before. Right, right, right. Gon just in a room, getting more powerful by himself. Looked like we were developing some kind of falcon punch there. Tell me about it. <laughs> Relatable. Hit the wall. Gon is the king of breaking through walls. True friend, competitive, but also supportive. And it is legit. Terrifying. Oh, we lost the old intro or outro. Hard for me to, I already have written this one off. I can't enjoy it. Oh, it was so good. How do I move on? Who are you? Oh, this is the next destination, Candyland. We added some gear and volleyball. <laughs> the Haikyuu crossover. Boo, <laughs> bring back the last ending. <laughs> Oh, we got a new thing too, new end screen. I guess we've moved on from the Hunter Hunter obituaries. Cool, I guess this is going to be the Greed, Greed Island game arc. Just kidding about the ending, I'm sure I'll love it once my heart heals. Wow, a lot of great things this episode to start off this arc. Kurapika's still in the Mafia. That's an interesting insight. Phantom Troop, just normal characters now. They're just like parallel protagonists, which I love. That's how it felt like it was going during the last arc. Zushi and Wing, still, still around, still doing their thing. Power escalation, but with underlying themes, messages, ideas about identity. One thing I was thinking about for Gon, which is where I thought they were going to take that at first until he had the Go epiphany. I think there's a personality type, and I think this works really well for me personally. It doesn't really do me much good to like sit around and think about stuff think about what I should do because my mind just ends up in a loop trying to build a house on sand rather than starting that zoomed out in that much of a vacuum it can be really helpful to just pick a challenge even if it's a vague challenge or just exposing yourself to new environments and new situations I think a lot of the the lessons I've learned that I'm most grateful for as much as I value thinking about things and intellect I think the the real stuff the tested hardened practical value wisdom came from me just like taking chances and putting myself in new situations that's a back you know, the world outside of you is something you cannot control. And if you're being honest about what it's telling you, it gives you a more objective structure for evaluation and learning than just like you in your own mind, in your own thoughts, like in a room. That clearly works for specialization. You know, there's a very, very clear goal where the outcome is very easy to evaluate. And so, you know, you measure what you're doing against the, the outcome you want. And it becomes very clear
clear what gaps you need to fill in order to get a better outcome out of that thing. It barely matters at all what you think about the thing if you're clear on what results you want. But the same thing works for that broad survey approach. You're going out and making contact with things outside of yourself and there's feedback there that ends up being pretty workable, objective truth about what the world is. And also what's interesting about that is I'm sure most people have experienced. You do that enough times, you start to see patterns in things that kind of underlie all of the things that you're doing. And I think that's the form we've gotten a lot of Gon's growth in. You know, he has a very, very particular challenge of the day. It's like, I'm going to stalk Hisoka. I'm going to punch Hisoka in the face. I'm going to rescue Kalua. I'm going to earn money. And in his engagement with those things, with those micro tasks, he ends up getting insights and skills that stack up on each other. <laughs> in some ways, the best test that could happen for Gon is just like fighting someone and having him turn off his mind a little bit and just dealing with the problem like the honey badger that he is.